with that, I am so very grateful to have been invited here. This is, I've been to Copenhagen now several times at the university, starting many years ago. Um, and I'm glad to come back here. One of the nice things about being here after understanding Susan, Susan is that, yes, there are many people I know in this group, but really happily, there are lots of people I don't know. And that is the nice thing about coming to these meetings. Now, what I have prepared today, <coughs> keeping in mind the, the topic of this, this team, is the some of the issues that we have been we at the Center for Research on Epidemiology of Disasters, we've been batting back and forth on issues related <coughs> to surveys, data, in which we've been messing around for years now. So we've had some years to think about this, we've seen evolution, and we have some issues that we think it's time that uh, some resolution is made, some sort of progress is made instead of going around in circles. And that is why I call the presentation at a crossroads because there are some decisions to be taken. I will start, of course, which with Haiti. I think Haiti is one of the dominant tragedies today that we are facing, not because of the, simply because of the earthquake. There have been many major earthquakes in the last five years of the world, last six years. You will remember the earthquake in Pakistan, 70,000 dead as a direct result, 70,000, that's a lot of people. 2008, there was the earthquake in Sichuan, 80,000 dead, right off the bat, within six hours, that's a lot of people. So it's not the earthquake. The earthquake is a problem, definitely. And people are trying, it's always amazing to me how generous people are. There is a world solidarity, there is a world generosity. People are trying very hard. The problem is not there. You will see Haiti in this graph. Is a country, is an island that has been subject to disasters almost every single year since 2000. Most of the time Haiti gets cyclones and storms and floods. They have not had an earthquake for a very long time. But almost every year they have been buffeted by cyclones in which many people have died. Many of those who have died in Haiti we have not even um, resources. We don't even know because this, you know, they, we just don't know of people who have actually died. They are more than badly organized. But nonetheless, with what we have, this is what it looks like. And some of those peaks over there are general flooding, cyclone Jan, and then of course there was the earthquake. 250,000, 350,000 people affected in a country of just under 10 million. The estimates of mortality today, um, let's see. No, is there a, the estimates of mortality today range very broadly from 50,000 to 200,000, right? I mean, we read about it. Now they're saying it's about 70,000. The morgue has reported now 60,000 bodies have been recovered, 60 or 70,000 bodies have been recovered, so lots of them will not, be, will not be recovered. What is important over here is not how many people have died today, because there's nothing we can do for the dead, absolutely nothing. But what is important over here is that in Haiti, as opposed to most other earthquakes, mortality from most other earthquakes, where the number of people who are claimed to be claimed dead, who have been estimated as dead in the beginning of the earthquake, in the first three or four days, decreased substantially in the next three months. We have found that in almost all earthquakes all over the world, the number of people who are presented as being dead in the beginning, in the first three days or four days, will almost harm, sometimes even get lesser in the next Four weeks, six weeks, three months after the media is gone, after everybody is gone, it can be reduced substantially. And why does that happen? Because most of the time, the numbers dead in the beginning are released for two reasons. One is for fundraising, and that is a fine reason. That's a fine reason. People need help. There is no doubt about that. And if it means that you make a broad estimate and you say thousands of people have dead, and that brings in the money from all of us sitting comfortably in our living rooms, that's fine. The second reason is that we don't have a clue. We are clueless, we only, what do we do? We usually take like the area of the earthquake which has been badly damaged, we make some sort of population estimate living there and we say these are the people who have died. Now, 
Haiti is, I would plead, I would argue, is a special case. It is not earthquakes as usual. Why? Because Haiti probably is going to see an increase in deaths as the time goes on, as opposed to all the Most of it is because the infrastructure in the country is so weak and the access to the country is so weak the number of people who will die subsequently, which didn't happen in Sichuan, remember. Sichuan, two to three <coughs> days later, there were no more earthquake-related deaths. And that's usually the model in most of the earthquakes. In Haiti, the deaths will probably continue to increase because of infected wounds, because of people who will not receive care. So these are people who should not have died, who had injuries, probably not even very serious injuries, but will subsequently die because simply the infrastructure in the country is inadequate. I would like to also put, make one more point about Haiti, and that's what I started with, is that the earthquake is not so much the issue in Haiti, it is the, the status, the development status of Haiti, which is really of goals here, which is really on trial here. And this is a trial which, in which all of us have really been responsible for Haiti's situation today. And if Haiti has 80,000, 90,000, 150,000, 200,000 dead because of the earthquake, it is not so much of the earthquake, it is because what Haiti is before, the, what Haiti has been before the earthquake. And let's take just two slides, I will show you two quick slides to show you what the situation of Haiti has been before the earthquake occurred. And this is a measles <coughs> MCV coverage. These are usually statistics that are much overestimates the coverage than underestimates the coverage. So, so these are probably, you can discount maybe 10%, 20%, because these are based on the number of vaccines deployed, not the number of vaccines actually administered. So these are probably overestimations. And you can see that uh, port au prince which is the last bar over here, <coughs> is way, really, probably one of the lowest, only northeast is lower, but it's way below the WHO recommendation to avoid epidemics and the sphere standard. So almost the entire country is below the WHO recommended level to avoid epi epidemics and pocket plants is significantly low. This is what we are dealing with now. 